What's up, guys? Welcome to Fight Junkies. Today is a very special day. It's International Fight Week. Yesterday was July 4th, and I got awesome, awesome, awesome guests in the house. We got Rob from McDojo Life all the way from Florida. Yeah, dude. Love and then we Florida. got an amazing Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu black belt. Try to get that uh, Portuguese uh, <laughs> accent going. Cool, huh? Matt, the owner of Epic Roll, awesome. is in the house Thank with some you, awesome man. gear on. Thank you, gentlemen, for coming by. I'm super stoked. It's yeah, dude, it here. was cool. We were just happened to be in town. I know me and you had uh, not a show not too long ago. Yeah. And when we were on the show, I was like, yeah, you're in Vegas. I was like, you want to hop on a show this week? I'm like, yeah, fuck yeah. Yeah, my wife's like, yeah. She's she like, you guys are connected. Tell him that if he needs dinner, come over, whatever. <laughs> you know, uh, she loved. Uh, there's a lot of times I have guests that I connect with. And then there's a lot of times where it's like, uh, I won't say an arrogance, but because I'm not what people perceive to be this big thing yet, people forget that. That they're human, yeah. you know, and that we're on this big rock that's spinning around, uh, and none of it matters. Right. So I'm like, yeah, well, well, you were at home making video. I was in Germany, and I speak three languages, and I was fighting so you could do that shit. Yeah. So I'm sorry that I started at almost 40 years old, but we're here, so. uh, and I'm super excited to get you guys are here for International Fight Week. Uh, what are you guys? I know that the UFC, you guys are big fans, but you're here for for your some other stuff for your personal yeah, brand, actually, right? Um, so me and Matt have known each other for quite a while now. Time flies, dude. And uh, I was very fortunate that Matt wanted to help or I actually asked him to help me. I was like, yo, man, I need some apparel. And I was like, I like your stuff a lot. And then we started working together with that alone. Um, and he's been doing McDojo Life apparel now for a couple years. Yeah. So all the McDojo Life apparel stuff is all his designs. All the stuff that he does is incredible. The quality is good. And then I couldn't think of anybody better to work on a new project with except for Matt because I don't work with people I don't like. <laughs> so, yeah, like, it's just life it's is too rule. short. <laughs> it's our rule. And so uh, I hit him up, and I was like, I kind of want to do a convention. And so we actually came out here specifically to do a convention. Um, and so we're scouting out locations right now. Uh, we did that this morning. And uh, we're hoping that next year, actually not hoping now, I mean, we're looking for okay. – we're pretty in it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, putting it in motion. Yeah, so we uh, scouted some locations today. Uh, we're going to keep scouting as we're here and then hopefully be able to put together a pretty damn epic martial arts convention, uh, which is not titled yet. So It's not titled. There's a running <laughs> – yeah. a few running titles, but – yeah, definitely something that I think people really appreciate. A, a spot that's missing. Rob had a great idea with the convention and what what you know. His, and when he kind of told me about his vision, I was just like, "I'm on board, man. This yeah. is amazing." You know, there's just there's a lot. We're very fortunate to have a lot of great people in the network that uh, are supportive of this. So, um, so I think it's going to be something that will you know, a lot of people will enjoy. Have you entertained uh, the Apex? I, we no. haven't entertained it yet. No, no. But that's a that's an interesting idea. So, really, at this point, we understand the international. So, I'll backtrack. So, uh, the only conventions that have really happened so far in our industry have either been a good old boy network where it's people from like who were stars or celebrities in some way, shape, or form, in like the '70s and '80s, and now they're like really old and they just always stuck together and they just never brought in anyone new. Um, and then you have like the martial arts super show, which as a kid, for anyone who doesn't know, if you're an MMA fan, you might not know about the super show. But if you're like a sport martial arts guy, karate, taekwondo, the super show was a big deal when I was a kid. And when so I, was, I haven't heard about that. I did taekwondo. Oh, really? I was a fourth degree red belt. Oh, damn. And then okay. I was about to go black. <laughs> but I, I haven't heard about that since like. Yeah. 94? Yeah, it had been going on forever. And when I was a kid, I always, like, I have, like, a bucket list of things I wanted to accomplish in my career. And speaking at the Super Show was one. Because all the people that I really admired were people who were speakers at this thing. So I was like, one day I'm going to speak at it. And then the thing that made me, like, known in the industry was McDojo Life, which is calling out frauds. So the thing that got me to a platform to where people might actually listen to what the hell I had to say was the thing that kept them, me at a distance from them. So, like, I originally put in, I was like, I'd really love to speak at the Super Show. And they were like, we'll see. And then they just never made it happen. There was always an excuse. And then the brand kept growing and kept building. And, and now you're bigger than all of them. <laughs> well, I don't know about that. But, you know, but they, one day they let me speak. They let me speak last year at the Super Show, which was July 4th weekend. Beautiful. Um, and then that was the last Super Show. They're done. They're no longer doing it. Oh, that's the, it's done. So, like, the old timer, just they were just. It, they were just out. And they were. It was like 
well, interesting because I over the years I had gone, but I'd never spoken. And I was like, man, I got an idea. <laughs> I was like, this this the super show was almost all about martial arts business. And I was like, it's that's kind of boring. Like, you know, if you're in the industry, it's boring. Yeah, I mean, you can have like, hey, tomorrow at three for an hour. If you're interested, we're going to have a guy teach you how to run a dojo. But, you know, the, that's not. Yeah. Yeah, it's yeah. boring. So yeah. like even like a, the the convention hall floor, it was you could walk through it in like an hour. And then it was like, oh, oh I guess I'm just going to go. Um, and then you stay for seminars or whatever. But it seemed like what was missing was interaction and fun. And so me and Matt, we talked today for a couple hours, I mean, about this. And one of the things that we really wanted was interaction. We wanted it to be fun. We wanted it to be something that people would go to that would want them to come back again the next year. Um, not the same old thing. Make sure it's something different. And I mean, um, you know, we scouted, again, we scouted some locations today. So we're looking at that perfect spot. But I mean, I, I really like the last one. I don't know what you... It was great. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it was just It's hard to conceptualize. Like We've been on the phone so many times talking about it. And looking at, you know, oh, this is 40,000 square feet. This is 60,000 square feet. We don't, you know, and we just, we like, we got to get in there and see. So it's, it's interesting how they have it set up. And it, I think that just by what we saw, you know, unless it, it's some astronomical amount, I mean, it seems like we'll be able to find something here that will facilitate, you know, the first year of this, because obviously this is going to evolve and become, you know, bigger and, and so over the years, you know, but a good good starting point and and i think on the tail end or or the front side of of international fight week really makes sense logistically because all these fighters are in town so we talked about really trying to line it up with that um so that hopefully we can all kind of complement one another you know yeah, like the fans are in town and it's fight week but technically international fight week is only like thursday four days mm -hmm. so it's like we'd like to be able to capitalize on that we'd love to be able to have a stage where you know, Comic-Con, for instance. Comic-Con has a stage and a platform for the new thing, new technology, new movie, new show, whatever. And they launch those trailers right there at Comic-Con. And so it's a huge deal. Like Marvel, the new Marvel franchise is going to be announced at Comic-Con. Our industry doesn't have that. Mm -hmm. And if it did, it would allow people these platforms much bigger than their small platform to be able to go, hey, this is the new movie, the new show, the trailer, the martial arts stunt guy, the... The, um, the guy, like even through our network, we were able to talk to so many people who love the idea so much that they were like, man, we're in. Before well, we, 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 They were in before we even yeah, had a concept. Like, well, you don't yeah. have to pay I was us. Like, like, I want to do a martial arts convention. You down? They were like, I'm in. You yeah. son of a bitch. Yeah, <laughs> I'm like, yeah. All right. Everybody do you think the down. reason that there isn't a lot more uh, like singular gyms and people doing this already is because of like the, the competition within the mixed martial arts community? Because I know that you could probably go to any gym. Like, you could go to Jocko's, you can go to SoCal, you can go to NorCal, probably go to Gracie or like 10th Planet, and you're going to be well accepted as a black belt. Mm -hmm. But I also know one of those communities, there's a lot of comp competition and comp competitive mindset. Is that maybe like you, you guys are kind of bringing it all together, that right? Be like, it. not just jujitsu, but like mixed martial arts in a whole doesn't really. I don't look at it as like a whole. I look at it like, oh, there's, you know, like yeah. it's separate, it's, but it's the same goal. It's a, it's a shame because you have like these old school mentalities of this. It's more like a gang mentality. You're with us or you're crunch. You know, you out, you're, you're a traitor. You're, you're over there with those people. No, no, no. That's not how this works. You see, that's psycho talk. You see, you are a service provider providing me a service I'm paying you for. <laughs> what I do outside of this building, it's none of your fucking business. Yeah. So like all these people are like, oh, I heard you go to a seminar. You went to a seminar over there. Why you go? Oh, well, you can stay there. Yeah. Like, okay, I'll stay there. Yeah. Like, if you're going to be that type yeah, of person, like I don't want to be around you that's anyway. That's psychotic. Why does that yeah. matter? And so like even in the business side of things, you have like Kovar systems and you have the Maya. And then back in the day, you had Natma. So you had all these like martial arts business consulting firms. And each one was like, this is mine, and you can't have it. It's like, why? Yeah. Why can't I have a, a, a convention and be like, you're here, and you're allowed to be here, and you're allowed to be here, and anyone who wants to come is allowed to be here. I don't give a damn if you do kung fu. I don't care if you're yeah. a karate guy. I don't care if you do ta taekwondo. Because as a whole, when I look at the industry, and everybody always gives me a hard time when I say industry, but it is. Mm -hmm. It's self-deprecating. Everyone's eating each other alive. This guy's like, oh, jujitsu? That shit's gay. I'm not going to roll around the floor with a grown-ass man. Yeah, and then yeah. you have jiu-jitsu guys are like, oh, you do that karate, that's cute. I'd choke you to sleep. Yeah. It's like, well, how about you could 
do both. And it doesn't matter because you're all under the same umbrella. Of Wait, are you talking arts. about mixed martial arts? And, and <laughs> yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Holy, I mean, what I a concept. Eh? Yeah. I mean, think about they gave Bruce Lee shit in like the I 70s. Yeah, but think uh, about, and he follows you, Joe Rogan. I mean, I don't want to just, you know, name drop, but. <laughs> Joe Rogan. <laughs> Joe Rogan. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I don't want to. But I'm a, I'm, I love comedy. Mm. And if you look at what he did a few years, seven years ago at the comedy store in, in, in Hollywood. He was one of the first people that had a big platform that said, no, shut the fuck up. Mm -hmm. We can all eat together. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So shut up, shut up, shut up, and let's let's build this thing. It's I, exposure you, for, for and, and it brings, it's all martial We're celebrating all martial arts. It's like, I mean, I think that's the way to start that conversation of acceptance and getting, you know, is, is like, let's show people uh, what what these are about. Let's take, you know, some of the higher level examples of that industry, put them on display and put them, you know, interactive for people to engage with and give them an opportunity to to experience that rather than preconceived notions about what they think it's about or what their gym's telling them about. It's like we remove all that nonsense and we're just putting an open, you know, forum for people to embrace and love all martial arts because all of them have helped support another. Like it's, you know, you can't just have like one restaurant on a corner. They need other restaurants to help, you know, mm -hmm. bring customers yeah. right mm -hmm. so it's like some some martial arts are gonna are gonna resonate with people more than others because it might be what they're you know self-defense or it might just be getting you know more athletic and, and improving your your physicality so i think those are all aspects to hit it really you know closes a lot of doors when you have that old school mindset which i think is comes from from before when these industries were not as commercialized mm. you know like as they've grown in popularity you can't have these old world dojo you know everybody you know cobra kai miyagi yeah, do yeah. type of <laughs> things like you can and they still exist obviously but it's not i don't see that as the majority like i travel around to a lot of different places and train with a lot of different schools and people and very everybody's very cool and everybody is generally very cool i think so some it's, of the nicest it's, people i've ever com met completely mm -hmm. it's it's like a it's like a family um and so yeah so i think our goal is just to kind of remove that sort of you know idea and stigma behind certain martial arts and just let everybody go in and have a good time you know exploring the world needs that it right it should now. be fun <laughs> yeah. like i think it's one of the biggest things that people miss in martial arts is everybody talks about effectiveness but what is your goal not everyone's goal is, like there are stati like statistically right 75 percent of people who join martial arts schools never compete and how do we know this? We know this because of programs like Zen Planner and Perfect Mind and Mind Body. They keep stats and they're very handy stats. That's how we know that the average person only lasts roughly about a year in martial arts. Wow. So you have this industry where everyone is trying to project their goals onto you. Like, oh, this is a black belt school. What if my goal isn't to get a black belt? What if the goal was the person came in and they didn't want to go to the gym by themselves and the goal was to lose 30 pounds because their doctor said they had to in order to get a gastric bypass? That person doesn't give a fuck about a black belt. They care about a heart attack. They're fighting heart disease, not human beings. So at the end of the day, if you as an instructor can recognize your students' goals, your customers' goals, you can help build the industry by not making it about you. Because it's not about us. Like, you know, like it's not about us. It's about who you can help and how those people can help other people. And when you make it all about you, you're doing a disservice to what this should be about. And I don't give a damn if you do kung fu, karate, jujitsu, judo. If it helps you reach your goals and someone can inspire you to be a better human being and make other better human beings, then we can make the industry better. But you will never do that with this bullshit mentality of that guy's a traitor because he went to another gym. How about, hey, man, I'm glad you went to that gym. You're still technically paying me. So when you go to that gym, come back with some information so that way we can learn from that gym and yeah. we can all grow instead of kicking them out like a fucking moron. And then now you look like an asshole and you don't help a person or you give them a bad taste. And yeah. then one bad taste equals 10 because they're going to tell people, yeah, I tried martial arts back in the day, but the instructor beat the shit out of me. I tried martial arts one time, but I tried to go to a seminar and then he yelled at me. Like, how does that help any of us? Well, you're literally on the opposite side of that with your brand. And a lot of ways where you're exposing these dudes that are fake, that don't belong in a closed room with 30 kids <laughs> who are going to look up to them. So you're literally closing the gap between what's real and effective for whatever goal you have and what's complete bullshit, fake, and for a paycheck. You, I don't even know if you realize what, I just was like, oh, 
There's a lot of people that do things because they want to be seen or they want to what they have a goal. This is one of the first humans I've met at the level you're at. And you do it because you love it and you're genuine. I, t- I told you that a lot. Like, well, don't get me wrong. You see how he just explained how yeah. passionate he was? Well, he didn't realize that's what he does. He, he fucking literally exposes the, the dirt bags and he wants to help people. Yeah. I love well, it. I'm, that's how you know it's genuine. Don't get me wrong. I'm an asshole, too. <laughs> like, trust me. I, I have asshole moments and I'm a flawed human being. And I think that that's okay. You know, all and of us. I think that as long as your goals help people. I think that that's important. And I think that when we have these selfish goals, all we're doing is just circle jerking ourselves. And the industry does that so much. Like it's all about, oh, that guy could beat that guy up. This is like the biggest version of my dad could beat your dad up ever. You know, (laughs) that's fucking bullshit. Oh, well, my instructor, so-and-so, who fucking cares? Yeah, who cares? Like I, I have never been inspired more than people who had to over, overcome some type of adversity. Yeah. And nothing's more inspiring than the day-to-day per- people, not the people on the platform and the pedestal. Like the guy who came in, I, I'll give you a story. I got fucking stories. So <laughs> so when I was a, a coach, so I coached jiu-jitsu for a little while. And while I was a coach, I was a striking coach there and I wore like a bunch of hats, right? But I was, a, I was helping out with the adult program and we had a black belt that was doing that and I'd assist. So as I'm helping out with this class, this guy comes to sign up, and he's got cerebral palsy. And so he had uh, arm crutches. And so he needed to have assistance moving from point A to point B, but the arm crutches got him to where he needed to go. So I noticed over a couple weeks' time that he would, like, take the crutches, and we had tables kind of by the mat. And he would set the crutches down on the table, and then he would, like, kind of quickly bow because he couldn't bow all the way or he'd fall and then he'd attempt to try to stand on the line when we'd all line up to bow in as a class but he would always fall and so one day I walked over to him and I was like hey man I you know I don't because it's weird you don't want to like call him out and you, you want to be polite but I was like hey man I, I it's okay if you like start on your knees like yeah, you don't get have it. to fall yeah. it's all right and he was like no he goes my goal is to stand and be able to bow and my his his whole ultimate goal of being there was when he received his blue belt he wanted to walk up to receive it without crutches and walk back that was his only goal his only goal it took him three years to get to his blue belt but i shit you not the most powerful moment in my career was watching him walk up get his blue belt and walk back and by the time he got back he collapsed and i fucking cried like a baby Right, yeah. I don't give a fuck. Yeah. I cried right there in front of everybody. That was powerful. I cry shit. every day. Yeah. Literally, that's ask power- anyone that knows. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But <laughs> that's powerful shit. Yeah. That's what we should give a fuck about. That guy's never going. Like, let's be honest. He's got cerebral. He's never going to be able to be in a physical altercation with another person yeah. and not be at a massive de- uh, deficit. But he doesn't give a shit about that because there's something more powerful going on in this industry than just who can beat who up. So why we put that on such a high pedestal? And by the way, just as another little small rant, that shit doesn't matter fucking anywhere else except for when you have to actually defend yourself in a martial arts studio or in a competition. No one's sitting at a boardroom. It's like me, the CFO, (laughs) the head of research and development, and we're all like, how do we make this company better? And then here comes Phil, the janitor, and he walks (laughs) in, and we go, you know what? Fuck all of you guys, because Phil could kick us all. And yeah. He could beat all <laughs> beat of our all asses. asses. <laughs> so we're going to hear what he has to say. Yeah. Never going to fucking happen. Yeah. No one gives a shit, because only in those three times is that the most important thing. Yeah. <laughs> you know? yeah. yeah, that's true. It's a crazy industry. It is a crazy industry. So besides venues, what uh, are you guys going to? I was just telling uh, Lano over there, thanks for uh, stepping in, about the press conferences and... Uh, you know, it's open and free to the public tomorrow. Open the doors at 3 o'clock at the T-Mobile Arena. Yeah. Uh, UFC X is uh, Friday and Saturday. It's We've like, got to go. I'm going to go see my buddy Jens Paul. We're getting inducted into the Hall of Fame. So that'll be that'll be really cool to, I to see. I am a big fan of him. Yeah. Uh, since, so, you know. Oh, I mean. He, I think he's like 38 or something like that. Yeah, he's actually, he's older than that. Yeah. Yeah. He's I, a I, Militich guy, right? Militich guy? Yeah, he, um, yeah, he's, he, I got connected with him years ago because his, his, uh, management company, um, Brian Butler with Sucker Punch, uh, he, he lives out in Richmond, which is like two hours from where I live in, Richmond. in Virginia. And, uh, and so when I used to fight MMA, he was always around that circuit. We got to know each other. And then I started working with Jens, like helping him do some design work and, and projects that he was working on back in the day. And, 
Um, and over the years we had, you know, little, little projects and things we would work on. And, and I started making the gear for Brian for all of his fighters for Sucker Punch Entertainment. And so he uh, he's going to be out doing the speech um, for Jen's. That's for so thing. awesome. So we're going to go and see that. Yeah. Good for him. Be- yeah. Family man, eating chicken feet. His wife's cooking yesterday. I saw him post. Yeah. He didn't look too yeah, his excited. Wife, his wife. <laughs> yeah. The Vietnamese she got can, all those amazing recipes. Can I veer off of what I just asked you about, like what you guys are doing real quick? What do you think about the UFC gloves and all these eye pokes since you didn't make they, gear? Didn't they modify the glove? I thought they did a little bit. Didn't um, they modify it to curl naturally now? No, I don't know. I know who's uh, Trevor Whitman. Is it Trevor Whitman? That's uh, Justin Gaethje's head coach. Yeah, out in Colorado and now uh, Usman. I think so. He has gloves they've been trying to push that, yeah. that make your hands curl. Yeah, I think that's a smart play. I mean, do you think if that's is it or is it like well, how do we prevent it? Conscious of it, like you know, I mean, it's a fight, so inherently you're trying to put rules on on a fight, and that's always going to come with complications because there's going to be things that occur that you don't necessarily plan on. There's going to be things that people aren't even intentionally trying to do, where they're just looking at like you know distance management, but that those fingers come out, and so maybe it's we have to now train fighters to be more aware of that, you know, that it's more of an issue than we thought, and so they got to kind of you know, maybe modify some of the resources that they're using to help get them more towards that. But I mean, it's, it's been like shit happens. Happening you know, it's a fight. more and more. Like I was super excited for the heavyweight bout, I believe two cards ago. And, um, I, I was like, this is going to be a monster fight. Ten, ten seconds in, he just got. That seems to be yeah. another thing. Like, How do we fix why is everybody that? shin snapping? Yeah. That is a nightmare. That's fuel the for worst me, man. one, I think. Oh yeah, That's the, I, that I just I killed the car. And it's crazy how like. Two former champs that yeah. are connected. Yeah, you know they both did the had the same injury. Um, Check their diet or something. I don't know. Yeah. You know what's really weird that I I did a story about this the other day, but it wasn't something I was aware was an issue. But it's happened a lot over the years. Is people busting right through the cage door? Like there oh, was, I saw I saw somebody get yeah, yeah he got like double leg through the door. Yeah, so. there's yeah. I I someone sent me a message and they were like, hey, this just happened like uh, last weekend. It's like Legacy Fighting Alliance, I think. And a guy double legged the guy right through the door and dumped him on the platform outside. Oof. Well, when that happened, I guess that that fighter now, I guess he's got to fight for the UFC this weekend, which congratulations for him. Right. Or coming up. And so I saw that and he was like, yeah, this happened to me, too. I was like, hmm. do you have footage of it? And those guys went off the platform. Uh, like so through the door off the platform and both landed on their heads equally a double knockout on the concrete floor holy and shit. this is an elevated platform probably what four or five feet mm-hmm. up could have fucking killed him yeah super dangerous yeah it's wild and i looked and it's just video after video if you look into it, it there's been so many of these yeah. and it's seems to stem from either the person not putting the pin in the door, which is a stupid mistake. Yeah. <laughs> or, it's always a little thing that yeah, gets you yeah, killed. Yeah, yeah. It's the latch, it's the three but inch latch. It just it seems like such an easy fix. Like if you had two doors that swung in instead of out, it seems like it'd be more reinforced. You know, I just watched a movie the other day, uh, Trolls. Yeah. Have you seen Trolls? trolls? trolls too. Like, tro- <laughs> oh no, no, no! Not the kid one. Not the kid one. You know, uh, have you seen Trolls too? Yeah, 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 I got, I got a whole about. squad of little ones. Yeah, yeah. Trolls the, Two is my trolls. favorite shitty movie ever. You like that one? I don't not know, the, man. I gotta not go. Cartoon Trolls Two is a, a sequel to a movie that doesn't exist because there is no Trolls One. <laughs> That's kind of dope. How they just we're just gonna. Yeah, you like, never heard of even... this movie? Trolls Two. Trolls Two. I, I got. There is no Trolls One. And the guy was like, yeah, people like sequels. That's like the director's like, <laughs> it's like people will like Secret sequels. is we're going to skip the first one and go right And the it's second. such a bad movie that it's like amazing to watch. Is it in like the Sharknado category? Uh, whoa, man. It was like Sharknado before Sharknado. Because oh, okay, okay. he didn't want to make a Oh, yeah, movie. I've watched this with my kids. Yeah. yeah. And uh, it's like weird, like they're trolls, but they don't call them. There's no trolls in the movie. They're only goblins. <laughs> um like it's all real, like a uh, uh, big vegan kind of push in the movie. It's like if you eat meat, like you're an evil person, oh and like oh god, god forbid you eat if meat. If you so, want a really good like drinking game movie, that's it. Just that's the one. That's the, that's one. the one on the list. That's the one. No, I was watching Trolls. Uh, I think it's on Netflix or something where there's a legitimately like a massive troll that gets awakened while they're digging through a mountain. It's a pretty good sci-fi movie. Yeah. But back to the point of like the cage, every time you see someone with a cellar, like for like tornadoes or hurricanes, when you, you got to open it up to crawl down. Yeah. And then 
Why? Your whole house fucking falls on it. You can't get it up. Yeah. Do it like you said. Do it the opposite way. Let it fall in. Yeah. Just get out of the way. Uh, see, how I never thought about that, and now no. that's a little terrifying. Yeah, like, you're, yeah, yeah. you're looking at this door like, oh, like, man. I hope somebody comes by. <laughs> yeah, the whole street's whole gone. Right, like, right. they're not looking for you, bub. Like, yeah, it's not that happening. seems like a pretty ridiculous thing to even have an issue. Like, close the door, lock it. I don't know. I mean, yeah, zip tie it. There's got to be something. For a movie. That's a good <laughs> premise for a movie. <laughs> yeah. You know, like, the apocalypse happens, you know, the house blows over onto your cellar doors. Now and they're you're just like, cellar people. Just, we're safe. Everything's cool. And you're like, Oh, fuck. Shit. <laughs> it's like 40, 45 meters down or whatever mm -hmm. with the sharks. The whole movie will just be like a dark room and them in the yeah. basement. Yeah, like It's like an hour and a half of people going, this sucks ass. It's like that Ryan <laughs> yep. Reynolds movie where he's stuck in the box. Oh, like in the ground, the, yes. The ground. He's just in there the whole time. Bur buried or buried, something. Buried, buried alive or buried or whatever it is. Yeah, yeah, that, that had to suck. Yeah, really bad. <laughs> really bad. <laughs> Dude. And like that, you know, the funny part is, is like that's a movie that really takes place inside this box. Yeah. So it's literally like an hour and a half of watching Ryan Reynolds go, I can't, I can't get see. out. This I, sucks. And they're like, I almost got you. No, I didn't. <laughs> you ever see Phone Booth back in like 02? Is that the one where the shooter? Yeah. yeah. Did you stuck in the phone booth the <laughs> whole movie? Because if he gets out, he's going to get you shot. get shot. Yeah. yeah. He just has to stand like you stay on the goddamn phone. Bro. You know, <laughs> you know, that's an executive who makes those movies. Oh, They're like, man. how do we make the cheapest fucking movie we yeah. can? I yeah. got an idea or some real wealthy need dude. one location. All right. Tom Hanks is on an island. Yeah. yeah. All right. What's the premise? That's it. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> we'll give him a volleyball words for a long time. <laughs> All right, he's got a toothache. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so speaking of movies, can you talk about what, what you got going on? I can. So, I didn't know if you wanted to. Uh, yeah, absolutely. I appreciate it because everybody always bugs me about the shit like online. Yeah. Like, what happened to your movie? I'm like, bitch, there was COVID. It happened like two years. <laughs> I'm like, a big fan of uh, who you're collabing with because when I was in northern Iraq, they were there at the same time. Yeah. Um, with like so the Jocko Wilink, yeah. uh, Jocko Willink is an executive producer of the film. <laughs> that is a huge thing. Um, thank God uh, for Mo. Thank you, Mo, from ADCC. Um, I don't think people understand how hard that man works, um, and he's good for the industry. Not just jujitsu, but just martial arts industry in general. He's going to be one of those people that did something amazing that people will remember the thing that they, he did but might not ever remember him. And I think that's a shame and a disservice. I think people should talk about Mo a little bit more because he does a lot for this industry and a lot for people. But that tells me a lot about his character. He's a good dude. He doesn't – really yeah, he he's just does it. To help, he's not for clout. Dude, man. Like he that. gives a damn, and he's you know he wants things to, to, to go well, not just for jujitsu, but in general. Like our industry grows, uh, rising tide raises all ships, right? So yeah. you know if jujitsu raises and martial arts in general raises, mm -hmm. we all get better. So and I just saw, uh, and I thought about asking you because there, I saw a short with, uh, I think someone was talking about your documentary. Oh, uh, cool. Who's the the Mexican guy? Mexican uh, the comedian, oh, yeah. and he he does uh, Tom not Tom, Tom Segura. There's a, no, he's on YouTube. He he he. And he, his whole thing is based on being Mexican. Oh, yeah, uh, yeah, Mexican yeah, yeah. MMA or something. Yeah, yeah, Mexican MMA. So yeah, Jesse, that dude's so funny. Jesse's awesome. I, I love that dude. Uh, yeah, I've worked with him a couple times, and um, he originally was going to help be a writer for it and everything. So I still keep in in touch with him. But uh, Jocko, the only reason I mentioned Mo was because. Mo, I didn't know was Mo. We were talking about this earlier yeah. in lunch. So Mo has a second page, and his second page talks about some of the more nefarious things that happen in the martial arts industry. And he was discussing, um, like, fight sports and what happened with fight sports and, you know, how that was a really big deal. I'm not going to get into that on here because it's a long thing. But yeah. he, I didn't know that was Mo. And so we were talking for a long time, and I didn't know he ran ADCC. So ADCC rolls around, and he's like, hey, do you want to go to ADCC? I'm like, yeah, but it's sold out. Like, how are you going to get me in? He's yeah. like, I run it. I was like, whoa. <laughs> so I looked it up. I was like, oh, <laughs> he really does run it. Yeah. So that's where I met Jocko. And so because Mo was allowed me to be able to be there and got me there just because um, we know each other. And then I was able to meet Jocko. Jocko was like, why didn't you just ask me? Like, I, bitch, I just met you. I didn't know yeah. I could just ask you to be a part of this, like, you know, to be an investor. Well, and, you're at, at the level you're at with your platform. It, it all it does is it elevate everybody. You know, that's why you see a lot of the influencers uh, in like YouTube space completely different. But they they do those fight cards together because all of them have millions of followers, mm -hmm. and it just elevates everybody. So when you got like a, a 25 plus year true martial artist who ran schools who happens to have a, a big following, why not bring them? 
I mean, it was cool. It was a very cool thing, man. And having the opportunity to be able to do something like this, every time the can gets kicked down the road a little farther, it yeah. does suck. But there's a purpose behind it. So originally when we started doing this, we were like, all right, well, let's plan out how we want to finance this thing. And we were like, crowdfunding is the best way to do it for us right now. So it took us three months to plan the crowdfunding, which equaled another three months of crowdfunding because Indiegogo only allowed you 90 days to crowdfund. And then it was over. So we did the 90 days and then we're like, all right, well, we only have 20 grand and we wanted 200,000. <laughs> so we're a little off the mark. But there was a couple things that were road bumps. Like one was like this guy saw that we were doing a documentary about this and he took a whole bunch of my clips, which still have the symbol on it, by the way. He put a 30 minute YouTube video out, called it a documentary about fake martial arts. And everybody was like, I don't know why I need to pay you. It's already on YouTube for free. I'm like, that's not my, it's not even talking <laughs> that's I'm, a YouTube video. I'm telling you before I was looking up, even though I've done I a lot like, of I could have done research. that shit. I like I, I've looked into your life a little bit, um, just out of respect to like be knowledgeable on my guests. But I swear, right, right here, I, I just that just popped up. Mm -hmm. I was looking for like yeah, McDojo like, life they're biographies. Listening. They're listening. The sons He's of clipping bitches. together. Yourself. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So, but that guy, right? Screw that guy. So he did that, and I'm like, you know what? The problem is, is like, I'm not going to tell you to take it down, even though it pisses me off because you're. Doing something <laughs> that I want you, you to do. <laughs> it's not promoting me. It's not about promoting me. It was about the fact that he was talking about fake martial arts and 7 million people watched that video. 7 million. If I would have got a dollar for every one of those people who watched his video, I could have made not only a legitimate documentary. I'd be traveling the world right now just going from school to school debunking. I would have already been able to be able to put in a association to be able to – push for governments to be able to require people to have local and federal background checks before they can open a school i could have changed i think you can do that still i i well, don't see I, with the I circle that just yeah. takes a lot more time now because this dude like bogarted some shit so anyway the other problem was there was this guy from another organization and he did a documentary that was crowdfunded or he was supposed to and it was supposed to be about red belts in jujitsu and he stole everyone's money and that happened only a couple of years before we started crowdfunding. So there were a lot of people in the car. This is just like that Red Belt documentary. Like, fuck you. No, it's not. Yeah. It's something different. I don't even know that asshole. So um, so <laughs> yeah. that was like a problem. So we wind up raising the 20. And then we decided, how are we going to do this? Because we only got 10% funding. The production company, Vodo Studios, they were like, you know what? Fuck it. We'll work for free. So I gave them everything i could i was like here's everything let's go forward and they were like w this is only going to last us roughly about five days of filming so we're going to take that but after that we're going to go ahead and move forward with just doing it for free so we Beautiful. we worked for three months we did it uh but there's a gap there between when we got the money into where we could film for the three months and it was this little thing i don't know if anybody heard about it it only affected just a few people on the planet in a very small <laughs> small area it was called covid yeah and when that happened all martial arts studios basically were just hemorrhaging most closed their doors most couldn't be open depending so it's very hard to film a documentary about martial arts when all the schools are closed so we waited for the two years for the lockdowns to ease and then we were able to film then so once we did it though i hated the trailers we made and so I was like, guys, I love the filming that you did, and the filming turned out great, but you guys suck ass at making trailers. Yeah. I was like, I wouldn't watch this <laughs> shitty-ass movie. So we, a friend of ours, Jonathan Sadowski, who is a producer, um, he's like, I got a guy for you. I got a director for you. So we got that director. His name's Adam Wood. He's an Emmy Award-winning director. And he was like, I can make this better. And I was like, thank God. And the trailer he put together was incredible. And so I was like, that's what I want. Because that's your thumbnail for the movie, right? Yeah, that, that's what I want. <laughs> Who gives a damn if the trailer yeah. sucks ass? Yeah. I'm not going to watch the shit, right, and I yeah. made it. So we wind up talking to him, and he came on board. Now he's that happened, and then we got picked up by UTA, United Talent Agency. So now they are representing the movie. Um, and then this weird thing happened to where uh, when he came on board, he was like, you know what, 200000 He's like, that's not the budget. He's like, let's work a real budget, which wind up being like 700 and something thousand. I was like... Okay. Yeah. I'm like, I don't know how I'm going to make that happen, but I will. Mm. And then so, but that kicks the can down the road, but every step of the way, it got more professional. And then Jocko came on board. And then like, now we, we were talking to another company. It's like EO Foundation or something. And they were like, you know what? You should make your budget 1.5. And I was like, all right. I thought the 700 was a big jump. They were like, we think we could turn this into a show instead of a movie. 
And I was like, well, ultimately, that's something we really wanted was to be able to put a lot more emphasis on these individual stories and use them as a platform to teach people about what not to do and what to look for and how to decide what studio or what schools you want to go to and what's good in the industry and not just what's bad because a movie is really difficult to cram. I would definitely watch a series. Uh, That's what I'm saying. There's so, I I mean, there's so much content there and I feel like that way you don't have any, you know, there, there's not a one singular tone of the movie that's going to dominate as like the, you know, the, the, the whole theme, like you can take this and you can break it up into so many different episodes. 12, 45 minute episodes. Yeah. There's just, there's a lot of content there. Mm -hmm. So it's, it almost seems like a disservice to, water it down to just one single documentary. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, for sure, I'm, I'm rooting for that. Yeah, dude, and I'm so grateful for all the original crowdfunders because all the original crowdfunders, out of everyone who donated, only one person asked for a refund. One person who donated like five bucks. I was oh, like, what a piece all right, of shit. Well, no, I get it. I, get <laughs> it. I went bankrupt. Well, yeah, the, the give me my nickel the, back. The only people who've complained have been people who never donated who have no hand in the game. Yeah. The people who actually do, I, I keep them updated, let them know what's going on as I know. Um, but what I don't want to do is have them go through the roller coaster I go through. Like, oh my God, there was a meeting we just had and yeah. that potentially could fund the entire thing. And then all of a sudden it's like, <laughs> so yeah but, they don't need to know all that well stuff. i don't want him to go on that roller coaster because that roller coaster sucks ass yeah. you don't want to be like hey this potentially could fund the entire thing oh yeah. i do that hey. every day when i leave oh. the house my, my wife's like hey, you made a grand today i'm like she's like what did you i'm like I, don't ask uh-huh. it, but i got it I like can, we're I good you know it, like all right <laughs> i'm selling my body I, yeah i literally like i'm on like uh I feel like I'm on little mission. You know, I'm going on five years sober, so I'm not a drug addict going on missions for drugs anymore. So now I got to create my own, like, sober, like, good missions to be positive. Yeah. I feel like I'm in a little, uh, I'm going on quests every day, you know? <laughs> like, I'm going to get this, talk to this guy, network, and do a there podcast. Uh, but she doesn't need to know all that stuff. Imagine a whole audience. Just support me. Mm. Trust me. I think a series would be dope. It would be. It yeah, we already know how we want to do it. Um because we again we've had three years to work on this project, so it's three years of grinding every day to try to make something happen. And making something out of nothing is something that I do. <laughs> like I got an idea, and I'm like, I know these people know how to do that. Yeah. I don't. <laughs> that that's how me and Matt met. Mm-hmm. I was like, I mean, I, somebody online one day was like, I'd buy a McDojo like T-shirt. And every time like I put together some apparel shit, I was like, this all sucks ass. <laughs> and then I like saw his stuff. I was like, Hey, you want to work together? And he was like, all right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That was literally, <laughs> I was went. in my bathroom. I remember the first <laughs> time we talked, I was like, in my yeah. bathroom and we were talking and I was like, well, this was good. This was a good conversation. Dude, Quentin Tarantino has the best quote. And like, I know he likes feet and that shit's weird, but he does have a good quote. Right. And his quote was like, it's not your job to make your vision. It's your job to have your vision. It's your job to find people who can make your vision. So like, let's say you have a t-shirt, right? You don't make the t-shirts, right. you make the design. Yeah. Someone else knows how to put it on the t-shirt, you yeah. know? And so that's what, how your visions, how your vision grows. Yeah. You have the idea and you give a fuck about it more than anybody else. And you put as much time and energy and effort into it. And everybody who tells you you can't do that, you tell them to suck your balls and you keep moving forward and then eventually it'll happen. Most people just fucking quit. They quit Mm -hmm. before they get there. They just quit. And that's cool because that's how, like, you're just waiting in line for success. It's all that's happening. And everybody who gets out of line gets you a step further to where you want to be. Yeah. So you're just waiting in line. Yeah. Just keep waiting. <laughs> Especially if these people don't have like a like a deep rooted belief in what they're what they're capable of. Like you're never gonna do the hard Ever. work to accomplish something if the belief in what you're trying to achieve doesn't exist. You know yeah. what I mean? It's like or you loosely believe it, you know, you well, think like maybe. I can't a lot of people most people they have the belief in what they believe in, but they just don't believe in themselves. Or they want it, you know, like you want this this lifestyle, you want this whole thing, but you're not willing to do the work to get there. Yeah. And then and then self doubt and and analysis paralysis and all these things get in the way when the the secret is just like do it. Stop. Just don't stop. You know. Just keep going. Like well, that's it's a bunch of relationships, man. Everything you do is a relationship. Like if you. Like like a, a, a female or if you like a significant other and you see that person, you're like, I really would like to get to know that person. I really like to sleep with her. But you never <laughs> but you never actually go talk to them. You didn't have conviction in your want. 
you didn't take the steps. Or if you did talk to them, maybe you got to that step. Okay, that's a big step for a lot of people. So you got to talk to them and then you got to a date, but you didn't decide that you wanted to actually learn about that person. And so now you're just talking about yourself. Yeah. It's like, okay, well, that ruined it. Mm -hmm. Or then you're like, okay, you weren't willing to do the steps that it would take to get to farther down the line, you yeah. know? And what is the end goal? Most people don't even fucking know what the end goal yeah. is. You know, fine. set the destination and how you get there happens. You but know? That's where I'm at. A lot of people, I've had people now who don't know how I got here go, well, you don't get it. You gotta, you know, you're in a studio. I'm just at, I, on my phone and I'm like, I don't know. I think I told you before, two yeah. years ago, I held a cardboard sign in front of the UFC. Yeah. yeah. Literally. I was living in a fifth wheel camper trailer, going to film school, my GI Bill, app, you know, my wife and I have always been perfect, but everything else outside of us was just like financial. Everything was just real, real rough. And I was like, I, I have this thing in me. I have this belief mm -hmm. and I can't keep telling her about it because it doesn't make anything. Nothing changes. And that's what I did. I held a cardboard sign in front of the UFC. And then that's when Billy, who was just next door, you know, because all the bodyguards, everybody was like, no, 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 no. Yeah. But once I got in, I hit off with Dana. And I still didn't get – I wanted to go on this roller coaster then. It took another two years before I got was like, you know, they reached out and said, hey, do you want to come host Fight Junkies? And I was like, but if you don't – so the, I say that for you guys that watch this because I didn't have – Everything. I just made a cardboard like sign and did it. You don't need to have this awesome big circle of influence. Just go. Just fucking go. Exactly. And if you fail, go again. And you're not. I would hope that the whole goal of whatever it is you do isn't just because you want people to see you. Yeah. Like, okay, you exist. Like thousands of people are going to see you on the streets walking right. all the time. So yeah. people see that you exist. You exist. Yeah. But like, so why that follower count matters? I don't fucking yeah. care. It, it matters. I see it so much now. And well, I think uh, because we've we've created a society that's put a value system on that. That that that's what people look at as, as you know, street cred and and validation and you know, and it's a very shallow, <laughs> like window <laughs> into life and how it, how how it really you know operates. I've completely. been calling out, not specific podcasts, but people uh, of the male gender who want to sit around a bunch of young women and tell them that they're a high value man and all this bullshit. Yeah. That shit drives me nuts. I'm never gonna debate with six young ladies yeah. that I'm 15 years older than and, and make them feel like less than because I have a little bit more knowledge because I read more books and right. statistics. Shut the fuck up. Oh, no. I can't, and it's everywhere. I can't go on any social media platform at all, yeah. any, anywhere without seeing Oh, a high value man's gonna do this and this and this and this. Shut the fuck yeah. up. Yeah, it's all distractions. It's yeah, it, it it's funny. I think that that notion of not uh, not knowing what your what your goal is, you know, that really stops a lot of people. Because I've asked some of my friends, you know, I'll be like, what's your what's your ideal like, you know, uh, schedule look like? What is your life, you know? And and they don't have an answer. I'm like, well, that's yeah. very hard to drive to a destination that you don't know where you're going and you don't know what you're trying to achieve. And you know, I was thinking about this earlier when Rob and I are looking around at this convention. Like, we're trying to create this this huge thing, and neither one of us. It's like we didn't go to school to figure out how to run conventions. You know what I mean? But but we have like such a deep rooted passion behind what we're doing that like all I know is that if we just keep getting up and just taking like one step forward towards this thing, it'll 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 work itself out. It's like <laughs> Absolutely, a, it's like a blinker on a car, man. My yeah. blinker is not a question; it's a statement. Yeah, I'm not asking you to get over. Yeah. I'm telling you I'm getting over, yeah. and then I just do it. Yeah. It's like the you know like we want to do a convention. I'm not asking someone if I can. Yeah. I'm just going to do it, and then yeah. if it works, it works, and if it doesn't, that's okay. Failing is awesome. Mm -hmm. I mean, it d doesn't seem like it at the time. It hurts <laughs> feelings. It makes you feel bad, but that's okay. Like going to the gym doesn't always feel good. <laughs> you know, yeah, like yeah. it's okay to fail, and I, I'm looking forward to it if it does happen because that lets me know all the things that I need to do to correct to make it better. Right. But we did do a different. We're doing a different business model, um, and. I, I don't know if anyone has done it this way before, but the idea is rather than putting all of the sponsorship money into a pool that's supposed to pay for everything, the idea is to have each individual sponsor sponsor a specific event at the at the convention. So, for instance, let's say hypothetically you have a, a MMA fighter that's famous who usually charges X. Well, not everybody charges the same. 
because not and not every sponsor can afford the same so you have bigger companies smaller companies well the martial arts industry is made up of a lot of small companies a lot of them and so they might not be able to afford a gordon ryan but maybe they can afford somebody who's like an influencer and so what they could do is like okay this influencer said they do it for 500 bucks okay flight hotel 500 bucks that's pretty fairly cheap to be able to sponsor an event well now you're not just sponsoring the event you automatically get that because you're sponsoring someone at the event so by sponsoring that person specifically every time that person announces they're going to be at our event you get advertisement every time this influencer is talking about the event they're going to be at so now instead of your name just getting tossed into a list of other names that no one's ever going to read and that's your sponsorship now you're getting legitimate advertising that can go out to an actual audience who trusts the people that they are there who are the influencer. So the ability to be able to have people interact with their favorite martial arts influencer. How cool would it be if you had like a celebrity, like an influencer that you really looked up to, and then we gave you an opportunity to film with them? How cool would that be? And like we can Prices. do that, we can provide that. We there's no reason not to. One yeah. of the rooms at our convention hall is specifically for nothing more than people making content. That's all that room is going to be for. And then all these influencers that are there, they can interact together. People who show up can bid on the ability to interact with their favorite influencer. So you do like an auction, and then they can sign up and like a dollar. Yeah. Then the next person's like, I got five bucks. And then if somebody's able to go, yeah, I got like twenty bucks. I want to film with so and so. And then what happens is that can wind up going to a charity. Yeah, like there's so much that could be mm. done that isn't done, and I don't know why. Yeah, and it's all been priced and and structured in a way that really doesn't make sense. Like you know, and we we just I think have a real opportunity with the network of people and utilizing social media that it makes sense to take people that that are going to be a part of this with us from either vendors and sponsors and and allow them and incentivize them to use their network as well to spread the word you know yeah, they have I mean, that built-in audience like it's silly for us to try to do it all on our own let's but that's kind of how we some of us are right it's like <laughs> for sure oh you bled out yeah like, i didn't know you were cut yeah. like, I, yeah. I didn't want to bother you bro yeah. you know, like, <laughs> you know yeah. we, we're friends before yeah. you know yeah. i was you know figured well, out I mean, myself you see, we've seen those those set where where they they incentivize people but it's like you know it's ridiculous it's like oh bring 150 people to our event and we'll give you 15 bucks and a free coffee it's yeah like, no, we, we, we gotta, gonna really we haven't nailed down the exact how we're gonna do that but we're gonna give huge incentives to people who are actually there working at the event well so like people who are doing seminars or people who are doing panels um, we're gonna try to give them a massive because again it's not about us yeah. it's about the industry and so if we can make it about the industry and we can make it about the fan, because again, if the average martial artist only does it for a year, that means on the planet, the amount of people who even trained martial arts ever probably still aren't training. Mm. So, and then there are more people who want to do the hobby of punching and choking, or there are more people who don't want to do punching and choking each other for a hobby than there are people who do. But there are a lot of fans who might have never done martial arts a day in their life, but damn it, they loved Under Siege or like, you know, <laughs> Cobra Kai's the shit, right? But what blew my mind, and I'm not <laughs> shitting on them by any means, because again, they've been in the industry for a long time. I just think we could do it better, is like Century Martial Arts. This is huge, you know, uh, gear company. They've been around forever. And Maya is a part of that umbrella. And they put on the super show and they had access, a direct line to the guys who did Cobra Kai, like a direct line. They could have had a panel where the guys from Cobra Kai are up there and you can ask them questions and interact. Yeah. They didn't do it specifically because it's not an event for the fan. It's an event for people already in the industry. And so if you weren't in the industry, there was no reason to be there. Yeah. So we want to change that because we know the audience is bigger outside of this. I mean, UFCX is Friday and Saturday. Yeah. yeah. Are you guys going to go to that? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. It's going to be nuts. No, not Saturday. I think no, we both yeah, fly yeah, out on Saturday. Saturday. Uh, but, Friday. Uh, did you guys... Friday. I'm just going to do the general admission one and go in there on my phone and do some content. We only do VIP, so I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> what um, is this word? What did general you say, general? Admission. Did you stand yeah, in right. line? Is that a standing in line? <laughs> I was like, eh. We don't really stand in line. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck is a line? <laughs> are, you, are you going to the fight Saturday as well? You said you're, we leave Saturday. Oh, so you, okay. You're not going to go to the pay-per-view? Yeah. 
But the Hall I, of Fame. I mean, I've been before. Like, you know, unless you have like really gangster level seats to the UFC, you know, the best seat is your the living fucking room. Living room. <laughs> yeah, I'll be in my yeah. living room, my flat screen. I I go to the Apex all the time, cage yeah. side. I, cool, I'm not, yeah, I'm not sitting up, and we'll make that happen. Uh, Maybe sooner than later. That'd be cool. Uh, yeah. Contender series. I'm sure we can, without a doubt, get uh, me and you in there to, uh, without I definitely. If, yeah, for if, sure, man. I'd if certain to. people weren't playing uh, a game right now in a, a casino, I'd have them come in and. <laughs> but speaking to him, the uh, um, my buddy John that owns this place, uh, he was an event. He owned an event uh, business. That's cool. So like every, what you guys are doing, like. He used to do that for for all the celebrities in Los Angeles and like Beverly Hills. So at the very like, least, like, you know, uh, I want to connect you guys. Yeah, that'd he, be cool, man. Yeah. You know, he's such a sweetheart. Any any questions uh, if he can answer? He's just, you know, he, yeah, he's such like, a giving, loving dude. So. We're we're taking all the advice <laughs> all we can of, get, yeah. man. And like, he lives, you know, and that's why I bring up the Apex for maybe like a, an event or something. Because I mean, it'd be cool. Like uh, the the big thing we wanted was we wanted to have. An event where if somebody walked in that there was they were so much that they could do there that it would make them go you know what i might have missed one or two things but that makes me want to come back because i had so much fun and we we put a big emphasis on we don't want any booth that's not interactive yeah nothing just stationary if you're no just static. sitting there i could care less to have you yeah. i don't care how much money you're giving me yeah. i want you to be interactive so like we want uh the pillow fighting championship we'd love to have them there because we were at uh, a jiu-jitsu tournament and while we were there they had a booth there, and they would let kids come up and, like, practice with the pillow fighting championship oh pillows, goodness. and it just drew this massive crowd. Do you know who Fight Circus is? I've heard of Fight Circus, yeah. I, I know the owner. I had him on the show. That's cool. Uh, yeah, I've, I've heard of Fight Circus. I'll tell you some stuff when we're not on the camera, but uh, <laughs> we're going to – I got to connect you guys. That's cool. Yeah, like – and then we were – you know, there's all these weird, like, things in the industry, and it's just, like, people pick at it, but it's fun. Yeah. So, like, somebody, you know, what I do. So, like, people send me stuff all the time. Like, yeah, that's what that looks like. Like, they'll send me Taekwondo. I'm like, yeah, that's Taekwondo. Yeah. Like, I don't know what yeah. you want to do with this. <laughs> but there was this thing. It was like a VR headset. And it's this one dude, and he's, like, in a Taekwondo gi. And there's a chick, and she's in a Taekwondo gi. And they put on, like, the Oculus. And they have, like, the thing. And they start doing, like, Taekwondo. And the guy's, like, super serious about it. And he's, like, yelling and he's doing it. But they're just <laughs> fighting virtually. Yeah. And people were, like, oh, this is bullshit. Like, it just – who kids yeah. – it looks fun. Yeah, yeah Like, that fun. looks like a blast. Why yeah. would I not? There's this company. Uh, it's called phone? 2020 yeah. Armor. So this company – have you heard of this? Yeah, well, yeah. So uh, 2020 Armor made this, like, Taekwondo chest pad. And the Taekwondo chest pad is pressure sensitive. So the old school, like, oh, my God, like, you barely tap me, and somehow you magically got a point for that or whatever, right? They make it so that way it's pressure sensitive. So if you just do that, all, little to nothing comes off like a literal health bar that's on there. Oh, wow. And the cool part about it is it has an app, so you can film two people, and on the app, it'll literally give a health bar on the screen, and it looks like two people fighting in a video game. That's so cool. It is mm -hmm. the coolest shit. And uh, Ali, the guy who runs it, is just, like, a great guy. His whole team is cool people. Um, and, like, stuff like that is stuff that most people don't get an opportunity to see. And so we want to have, like, put that on a stage and show people, like, look, this is the technology going on in our industry right now. This could be the next, like, this could fix the Taekwondo issue. This could fix the point fighter issue. Mm -hmm. This could fix a lot. A lot of, well, I just saw something like that where there's cameras now. Uh, I, I believe it was boxing. Um, I don't think it was mixed martial arts, but they had certain cameras that were going to keep score for the boxing match. Yeah, like AI. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that makes sense. I mean, they're gonna see it way better. <laughs> than people yeah. like, yeah, you're you know? a pro fighter. What, yeah, what do you yeah, think like of the judges? Yeah, I, I don't. I think that it's like the old adage, like don't leave it up to the judges. It's just, it's the unfortunate <laughs> truth. You don't know who you're gonna get. You, you might, you know, and especially if it's not like always like a pro level. So as like a fighter, you gotta. You know, be definitive in your win one way or another. I mean, that's 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 always the the goal. So yeah, I think yeah. with the help of AI and being able to, you, you know, it's it's only going to evolve the industry and 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 make it. I think I think better overall. You know, less discrepancy, less. You know, it's like it's like Teslas. You know, like I I put my thing on and it drives, and I know that it's paying better attention than I am. You yeah, know, it's man. kind of insulting. I'm like, you know, 
So <laughs> it's just the way it's the reality. Until it becomes self-aware. Yeah, until and it's then sentient. Skynet it's goes like, live. Yeah. I know you wanted to go to work today, but I'm going to take you off a cliff. I just watched the first Terminator like two weeks ago. Oh, Did you? man. Yeah. So before we get out of here, I want to ask you uh, a question Ten inches. that I haven't asked. <laughs> He, he knew her. He read my mind. <laughs> he, he told you 11? Lion son of a bitch. <laughs> Man. I knew um, it. I knew it. I'm, I'm still hurting. He told me three, and I just oh said, go God. for it. Uh, <laughs> your fault. In everything that you do, it's two, two, two parts, actually. The first one's I'm going to just go right into. Are you still having fun? And how many of these McDojos have come after you in any way, shape, or form? Oh, well, the first one, <laughs> those are both more complicated than you know. Um, so the first one, am I still having fun? Absolutely. I, there was probably, I don't know, I think there was like two years of my life where I just fucking hated martial arts. And it was it was like I've been doing this for 26 years, but my job, I have to see some pretty horrific shit. Um, you know, I saw a uh, eight-year-old kid slit his throat and kill himself in Indonesia because he believed that he had something called Tanaga Dalam. He believed he had this inner power where he could not be hurt. Um, and over there, they do this practice called Debus. And Debus is like self-mutilation without harm. And it's just a magic trick, right? But the kids don't know that, and it's ingrained in them that this is real. And so at a young age, they believe this. So the kid killing himself was like a lot. Um, saw kid, uh, this is actually in the trailer, but people getting, uh, teenage kids getting run over by trucks in Indonesia for, while thousands of people watch, um, the, the truck was on a ramp, the truck goes up the ramp, it falls and kills the first kid immediately, runs over the second kid, it stalls, um, and it's just a stalled truck on top of this kid, and then the third kid was smart, he was like, fuck this, and he moved, and then it ran over the rest, but like, um, uh, just, I've seen some really horrific shit, I'm not gonna go through all of it, but that's just a touch. And after a while, it gets to you. And so it makes you wonder, like, are you helping? Is this doing anything? Have I prevented something? Did I help someone? And like, will this ever stop? Will I just be perpetually in this, this cycle where all I'm going to see is just this bullshit? And it's never going to end. And after a while, I'm like, you know, I do. if I do a story every week, which I do, about a child who's raped, when does it stop? And I've done stories about people who follow the fucking page. The, how crazy is that? Oh, wow. There was a guy in Florida Damn. who was a nurse, and he's literally in the hospital. He calls an 18-year-old student up. She goes in broad daylight in the middle of the day. She goes to meet him because he's a mentor, and he was like, hey, we should hang out or whatever. This is a naive young woman. She goes there. He goes to a on-call room. He blocks the door with a gurney. And then he raped her in the room. By the way, cameras everywhere. Rapes her in the room. She runs out, calls the police. And while she's at another hospital getting checked, the police are there taking a statement, which all that's horrific. The fucking guy called her. And he, they were like, pick up the phone. And he admits oh, to yeah, everything. Oh, yeah, let me pick up the phone. Right? And he admits to everything. He admits to the whole thing right there on the phone. Right? And I looked into the guy to do the story, and this motherfucker followed the page. Yeah. I'm like, you knew... You already saw all of these things happening that all these people get caught for the same shit. Well, look and at Chris Hansen. How many people oh. were on his show uh, to catch a oh predator? And they're like, oh, no. Because yeah. <laughs> like, he walks in and they know yeah, what it is. Know, he yeah. walks in with some condoms and cookies. Yeah. Like, those things go together. Yeah. Um, you know, it's like, you, you brought fruit punch? Yeah. Like, and, eh, okay, that's a weird thing yeah. to bring with a deal, though. But it gets old. That's why I walked away from the police force. Well, it, it's just horrific, I man. And see after it anymore. a while, it's like, you know, I love martial arts and it's done so many good things, but that's not my job. My job is to show the things that people are not discussing because they keep happening and people keep ignoring them. So we talk about those things and we got to dive into those subjects no matter how uncomfortable they are. But it weighs on you. And so finally, I'm just like, martial arts sucks ass, son. Like, these people blow. Like, I'm not doing this shit anymore. So I, like, took, like, almost two years and just, like, I was like, I'm not doing this. I just makes me sick to my stomach to think that we walk into a building and we automatically give people virtues who haven't earned shit. Mm -hmm. You go, honor, integrity, respect. Yeah. For fucking what? What did you do to make me give you these virtues? Yeah. Why do I have to call you master or sensei? Sensei makes a lot more sense because it translates to the one who came before. That makes sense. But master my ass. You're 23, motherfucker. Like, you ain't mastered shit except baiting. Yeah. So when it comes down to, like, this industry, it, it fuck with me. And then 
you know, I I started kind of uh, I I don't remember what event I went to. I went to some martial arts event, and it was just fun. And I was like, that's the thing I like. And I was mm-hmm. like, I started getting back into it and started training a little bit more. Like I wind up like losing the thirty pounds I gained when I wasn't fucking training. And then uh, I started loving it again. So now I'm, you know, a lot more positive. But at that, it took a while. It took a second to, like, get over that hurdle, which I thought was going to be inevitable anyway. But I didn't know when it was going to hit me. It was like, surprise, motherfucker, bam. I was yeah. like, oh, yeah. <laughs> I hate this shit. And I was like, wait a minute, do I really? And like, mm-hmm. no, I hate those people who take advantage of those positions. Those are the people that I should be concerned about. There are way more people in this industry who are good than bad. And... I had to remember that, and it just took a while. It, I, I I understand in a lot of aspects. Me going to Iraq years ago, 17 years ago, is intriguing to a lot of people, especially uh, young men. So I get asked a lot of questions, but I've uh, I've even had it in the studio a lot uh, because it's intriguing, right? People want to know. They want to know the inside and the dirt of the mixed martial arts community. But I have to tell people, like, I don't want to think about the war. I lost mm-hmm. friends. I, I've lost marriages. I've lost almost, you know, almost myself in my own life. That shit weighs on me. Mm-hmm. I don't want to wake up and be asked like, "Did you ever kill anyone?" or "How was the war?" or like, I don't want to fucking think about it, man. Mm-hmm. I just want to have a good day mm-hmm. and think about fight junkies. Mm-hmm. Yeah, man. And go home and smile. I, I used to interview homeless people. I did mm-hmm. probably like four hundred interviews, and I had to stop. Because every single day it was just darkness and sadness. And I was like, I can't. Yeah. I need to protect me a little bit. Yeah, that shit sucks ass. Yeah. And it's like you want to do good by people, right? And so the whole point is to do good. But if, like, you're not mentally there and it's only hurting you and it's, like, at a, at a certain point, it's like if I'm not healthy, I can't do the job to help other people. And, like, that's what they tell you in, like, an airplane, right? They're like, yeah. put your mask on first mm-hmm. and then save someone else. Like, Because yeah. if you're dead, you can't help anybody. So, so I commend uh, you for walking away you know well i didn't walk away i just well i think i needed i think i needed to take the time because during that time i was still doing mcdojo life i never took a break from that but i I had to take a a break from training because i was forcing myself to go i wasn't doing it because i love it and i can't do my job effectively if i don't love this shit because again like doing those particular stories what are you protecting Mm. you're trying to protect the good part and if all you're doing is like talking about the negative shit you're not you're not protecting it like you're harming it and so i had to to refix that but um that's all good i'm I'm in a good place now so i'm happy with it and then um you had a second question and i got lost in the people go after you yeah if you had because i mean essentially you've probably shut down hundreds of businesses right (laughs) so there's got to be a time mick dojo life is in the house walk around places like how many people have ran up (laughs) <laughs> fucking tried to cheat your ass in the street, you so, know. <laughs> yeah, I got a, uh, I got, I get cease and desist all the fucking time. So and and I, Lana, thank you. We'll, we'll, we're almost out of here. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, so I got. She's I like, got, hurry I up, get, motherfucker. <laughs> I get death threats, cease and desist, and shit all the time. And like, I, I toss them over to Matt, and I, we joke about it, um, because that, <laughs> that shit amuses me. Because like, I, there was this dude who's like, uh, he, he's upset at me because he had a registered sex offender in his martial arts studio. Um, he just had him there. Apparently, that's like, frowned upon. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's not okay. Yeah, yeah. I guess they're saying it's not around, okay. I don't and know. And it's like you, there's clearly video of him like holding shields for kids and then working out. He was like, "That guy's not in my gym." Like, oh, you mean like this photo of him right here in your gym? Like, yeah. yes, of course he's there at your barbecue yeah, Saturday. Like, <laughs> like, <laughs> so like this dude, so he was upset, but I got like a cease and desist. And so as a, <laughs> so I'm very petty. Petty is where it. I'm at. So, <laughs> and especially with people who do shit like this, right? So I took the cease and desist and I actually gave them to Matt. And I was like, yo, we should make some rash guards and shorts out of this shit. Oh, <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> so ah, Plastered you know, all over. Yeah, and so we're going to work on that one. Yeah. Uh, and then the, I'm going to do a song about him. Um, and I'm going to have, uh, I'm definitely going to do a song about the incident itself. I don't know if the song will be necessarily him legally. Definitely it'll be. Dave Portnoy is like, does that the uh, owner of Barstool? Uh, at the end of he the makes game, T-shirts and gets trophies and shit. He'll fire you yeah. and then fucking sell a million dollars worth of T-shirts. Yeah, and like, yeah. like, you know, these are people who are doing really fucked up shit. So it's like I don't care that they're mad at me. If they're mad at me, that means I'm getting to you. Yeah. yeah. I hope I'm getting to you. I hope when you go to take a shit. You were constipated with the thought of me. Yeah, I hope that when you wake up in the morning, the very first thing that happens is you are fucking mad that I exist in this world. 
because fuck you. Yeah, that's yeah. why. If you raped a kid, <laughs> if you defrauded somebody, if you hurt a student on purpose, if you've done nefarious shit in this industry where you were given a position of power and then you took advantage of it, I will be that fucking tumor and I will grow on you until the day you leave this world. You will know that I fucking exist because no one else is doing it yeah. and they fucking should. And you know what? Hey, I get it. There's politics. You don't want to get involved because you got a business. I don't. <laughs> I don't have to worry about who affiliates with me. I don't have to worry about none of that shit. And one thing you fucking know for sure is like I I will burn the house down with you fucking in it totally. and me. And we're both <laughs> like I even tell all my sponsors, like my sponsors, I'm like, yo, man, if y'all fuck up, I'll put you on blast just like everybody else. I don't give a fuck how much you pay me. Yeah. Like if I find out you did something like that in this industry, you defrauded somebody, you fucked up, I promise you I will get you. It doesn't matter. <laughs> And like, because it's oh, not about shit. me. Dude, relentless. When I first went to his, I remember, oh, I remember staying Google. at his house one time and I walk in and like, I'm just there and, and he's on the phone with one of those like companies. Like, I don't know if it was Nest, Nest or whatever, you know, like the thermometers in the house. Yeah. And they, you know, they, he just was supposed to get like a replacement and they fucking dicked him around for so long. And I mean, I saw Rob, like not only put conscious effort into the hours of being on the phone there, but then like in the next couple months, it was just kept going and going and i was like don't they know who you are like they should probably just go let me just send you another oh. one let me just yeah some go. people don't uh I'm like he's not gonna stop I'm until you to until stop. he owns stock in this fucking company and he's so, got like 10 nests on well unfortunately <laughs> uh we're we have to stop i could go on for hours with you guys yeah. um uh I yeah i think we got yeah. I think we, yeah i want to i want to say like what a dope show to have you guys on. That's what I truly mean when people say, what do you, are you to a podcast? I'm like, it, it's just a bunch of the guys just bullshitting and talking or girls. I'm not, you know, one of those people. So I'm glad you guys trusted me enough to come over and, and come on the show once again. Uh, and uh, I'll, we'll talk before you guys leave, but I'm going to be at all those events too. So maybe we can connect. Um, For sure. But McDojo Life. I'll take it. And epic roll. Epic roll <laughs> with the dopest apparel. Uh, it's the unfortunate truth, guys. It just is. I, I love mean, it. I love it. You truth. didn't You didn't put that label on. I didn't. It, you know, the masses put the label That's on. That's it. Yeah, it's I'm going to have to. to say? Not me. <laughs> I'm going to have to get some some stuff and put oh, a, yeah. you know, so my 62 some, views can see your stuff. Get some epic roll. That's right. <laughs> hey, man, that's how it starts. <laughs> yeah. No, together. we're at like a couple hundred thousand a month now. That's awesome. Know? Congratulations. Congrats, yeah, well. yeah we're getting there. Uh, not on YouTube, but like in general. Yeah, it happens. It grows. So we're day. growing. But yeah. all right, guys, thank you for fun, coming man. on. Thank you. Thank Fight you. Junkies. All right, Fight Junkies, we're out. Peace.